Victims of Schrager Musik were on the way back from Pienemunde. August 17th, 18th, um, 1943. Um, this is a serious subject because Bomber Command has no defense whatsoever against an aircraft that's flying like this just underneath him. None at all. There's nobody can see him and there's no under turret. And it's a deadly weapon. I'm going to give you a description. This is taken from the book. It's written by a man called, uh, one of the first Germans I interviewed, uh, I've forgotten his name now, Erich Handke. He's Unteroffizier in the Third Geschwader Nachtjäger Gruppe 1. Nachtjäger Gruppe 1 is Night Geschwader 9 Gruppe. It's the number one, it's the premier unit in the night fighter force. We were flying from Leon. Leon is right down here. And we were, have been told by the running commentary to make for uh, the Ida or Otto beacon. Uh, and we were told that the bombers were about five minutes away. I hadn't even switched on the SN2 set when the gunner poked me in the back and pointed, there he is, up there, the first one. As we came round, we saw another straight away, about 200 metres directly above. I switched on my SN2, but we had dropped 2,000 metres behind in the turn and I'd lost him. When the set warmed up, I saw three targets on it at once. I headed for the nearest and Druvus, he's the pilot, picked it up visually at 600 metres. Weather was marvellous, clear sky, half moon, little cloud, no mist. It was simply ideal, almost too bright. It was a Lancaster, flying nicely on a steady course, so that when we were comfortably positioned underneath and from about 50 metres, Druvus opened fire with the upward fire and cannon at one wing, which immediately caught fire. They didn't fire into the belly of the aircraft, loaded with four, five, six tons of bombs, 50 feet above them, 50 metres above them, whatever it is. Uh, they all flew. Uh, fired into the wings where the petrol tanks were. We immediately, one wing immediately caught fire. We followed the Lancaster for five minutes until it crashed below with a tremendous explosion. That Lancaster was from um, the Australian 467 Squadron based at Binbrook, I think, in North Lincolnshire, part of one group. Um, the action of, I'm still reading from my book, Major Martin Dravers in following the burning bomber without firing again gave the entire crew the opportunity to bail out safely. Um, it is the only aircraft that's going to crash on the long rail route, the long leg, where there's a hundred percent survival. Uh, it crashed and blew up near Spa in Belgium and he's probably number one. There he is. Don't worry about the length of the bomber stream, that's nothing to do with that. That's the first aircraft to go down. During the next hour, 60 aircraft go down. I'm not going to go into the detail. You've got the background, you know how they did it. 57 were by night fighters. The, oh, by the way, Dravers shoots another one down over here, this aircraft. So he's come from Leon, he'd flown up, he shot a bomber down here, he follows the bomber stream, he shoots another one here, then he lands somewhere else. Here you've got the versatility of the Luftwaffe. They can fly huge distances over Germany using their radio beacons um, oh God, uh, to uh, navigate by. 60 bombers in one hour, probably the most intense air battle of the war at night in the war. Three of them by flak, one battery, little battery in the middle of nowhere, shoots three bombers down with 20 shells. I've got evidence from one of the men in one of the aircraft. Uh, otherwise it's uh, all night fighters. We are behind time, ladies and gentlemen. Spoofs were ignored, there was no cloud, the contrails were being left, and I cannot strong to stress too strongly that everything is in the Germans' favour. 
Just look at the results. There we are, we're done there. Um, back to the main story. There's been a slight wind change and the stream has edged slowly north. You can tell that from the density of the thing. And also the wind is not as strong behind them as they thought. Um, and they have reached the turning point too early. So there is a false turning point there, which is my invention, and I think a lot of bombers uh, turn at that point instead of at that point. Now, it doesn't seem very much, very serious, but they're intending to run down through, I've got a chart here, two towns called Bamberg and Erlangen, which run straight down to Nuremberg. This is something that I was planned that you were all going to have a copy of. <laughs> um, anyway, I can work from there. Um, but as they start flying down this route, they find that two things are happening in this area here near Nuremberg. The cloud has not gone away. It is precise, got the German records. It is precisely two and a half miles thick. So the visual markers had it. And also, the wind has picked up and there's a strong crosswind. So the bombing results are miserable. You can see how the strong wind has picked up and blown that group of bombers away from the true path and they're followed by night fighters who shot a whole lot down including Chris Panton. Chris Panton is the brother of the two brothers that set up East Kirkby Heritage Centre in Lincolnshire with a Lancaster just like yours that can do exactly what your Lancaster do and uh, they just live a few miles away from where I live in Lincolnshire and I supply them with books and I'm very friendly with them. Um, Fred Panton's dead now, but he came to my office, this was pinned to my office wall, office to me as a businessman as I was, um, not a study, um, in the garden at Boston, and I had appealed through the newspapers for anybody that had been on the Nuremberg Raid to come and help me, to contact me and help me, and Fred I knew Fred because we were both in the poultry industry. Came to me in the office and said, my brother was killed on that raid. I said, what squadron was he in? And he said, such and such squadron. I said, who was his pilot? He said, Nielsen. And I got all the records from the Ministry of Defence about every crew. And Carl has told me that they've not been re um, released to the public record office yet. But for some unknown reason, somebody took pity on me and sent me a report of every crew that went down. So I was very, very lucky. And I'm sorry, Carl, but I gave them away to somebody. Because I know it's a great frustration to the admin over here that they can't get access to these reports. Um, and Fred said, is that my brother's aircraft? I said, yeah. He said, bah gum, he says. I mean, he was a real Lincolnshire countryman. Bah gum. And he got in his car next week and he drove all the way there. Didn't speak a word of German. And he came back with some bits of Halifax in the back of his car. Uh, and I've spoken to the Pantons about this. And his heritage centre with the Lancaster, I think, was, start, was born from that conversation in my office. And it's, uh, the others agree with me that, yes, that's probably how it happened. Um, the bombing in the Nuremberg area I'll dispose of fairly quickly. Very few bombs in Nuremberg, very little damage done. There's cloud, there's a strong wind, markers are being dropped by the pathfinders, disappearing into the cloud, never to be seen again. They've got emergency sky marking, little red uh, markers on parachutes being carried away quickly by the wind and they start marking a little town called Lauf, L-A-U-F. And you can see how the bombers are following this, the markers are being blown across and the big bombing area is in this area here. 41 parishes 
receive, villages receive bombs. Um, because I wrote to every one of them, the Burgermeister, and I had a friend who translated the letters. So as, after all this sacrifice, the effect on bombing Nuremberg is that much, not much. Um, meanwhile, something curious is happening here, because there's Schweinfurt, and a mosquito that should have been in the very forefront of the raid, with one target indicator and three 500 pounders, um, his H2S set uh, had failed, and he operated on um, dead reckoning all the way from the coast. And he turned at the false turning point, and he was tracking down here when he sees what's called an active target. A lot of flak, a lot of searchlights. Germans had two types of targets. They had targets that kept quiet as long as they could in the hope that the bombers would go somewhere else, and active targets that would let fly at everything at the drop of a hat. So he said, well, that must be Nuremberg. I've turned there, that's about the right distance. And he drops his bombs, and there's a few other aircraft. We're getting a bit scattered now, you can see here. Join in, a Lancaster is shot down and explodes with a huge explosion on the ground. Two Pathfinders turn up, one four minutes after what would have been zero hour at Nuremberg, and the other seven minutes after what would have been zero hour at Nuremberg, which leads to a very curious little story, because what's going to happen is the navigators, oh, there's no cloud at Nuremberg, at Schweinfurt, by the way, and 106 aircraft are drawn into that raid and they all produce bombing photographs. Not one of the aircraft that goes to Nuremberg produces anything. So you've got, that I, I think my page says, the camera cannot lie. And the camera says 106 bombers bombed near a bomb Schweinfurt. But the navigators now start plotting their route home from here, thinking they're from here. That's one curiosity. The other curiosity is the one group uh, has a sort of, I mean, everybody's puzzled to death back in England as to what's happened. And one group eventually uh, produces a report and it says the Pathfinders were four to seven, F-O-U-R-T-O-S-E-V-E-N, minutes late over the target. And those were the two Pathfinders at Schweinfurt. The official Australian history of the bombing war, somebody must have been dictating the text, and it came out as 47. Four to seven becomes 47. So the Australian official history says the Pathfinder was 47 minutes late. Just a little story. Coming home, uh, the stream gets spread out all over the place. The blues markers show the spread of the bombing stream. Headwind, long slog, there's only one bit of good luck, and that is near Stuttgart. Another one, Stuttgart, somewhere around here. No, Frankfurt, Stuttgart. Ecterdingen, yeah. There's a full German group of night.